afternoon we're going to talk about um, Come On, Come Back by Stevie Smith. Um, I suppose, first reading of the poem, it's, it's a poem um, It's about conflict and it's about death as well. Um, the girl in the poem, Vaudevue, um, dying at the end of it. What do you two think it's about? I think um, there's lots, I see all the references to other battlegrounds and um, conflict, but actual real battles that we recognise as something that has happened in the past. Um, but the poem's actually set in the future, so I think the real message is that we haven't learnt anything and it's trying to, to get us to think about that. Yeah, it does. It, the, Aust the Battle of Austerlich, isn't mm -hmm. it? Um, so even though it's happening on that same field, mm -hmm. isn't it? As old battles, so we're not learning anything from past exactly. mistakes, we're still re going over mm -hmm. old places to our battles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what do we think about that idea of setting in the future? Why do we think she did that? Or what clues have we got that it might be the future? Um, well, there's the, uh, the made-up name for the chemical ML5, this idea of the Memel Conference, which is a made-up conference. But they've all got sort of, it's all very clinical, and sort of, I think that there seems to be lots of references to Nazi Germany and this idea of extermination. Mm. But it's the made-up... Um, names, I think that's that's what gives me a clue. That it's and in the, the girl future. herself being a girl in the front yeah, line is something yeah, that then would have been would have seemed very futuristic and imaginative. So when, rather than so when Stevie Smith wrote the poem, it would have been very surprising to have a, a, a girl soldier. Mm -hmm. in the yeah, poem. especially People's... such a young girl as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. We've mentioned this idea of the Battle of Austerlitz. Um, the Memel Conference, you know, Memel being um, in Lithuania now, so, you know, being divided between um, the, the, the Russians and then Nazi Germany and then the reference there, the implication mm -hmm. being the extermination of um, the, the Jews within um, Lithuania at that time. So I think the poem tells a story, but what is the story that it tells? Because sometimes it can be a bit confusing for people reading it for the first time. I think... Um Initially, we're just introduced to the character of Audrey, aren't we? And we're introduced to her as a soldier. Um, initially, says she's uh, she's left alone. She's left by the ebbing tide of battle. So, you know, the, the suggestion is the battle's over and she's left behind. And yeah, I think she's the only one that's yeah. there, isn't she? Maybe the only yeah. one that survived it that far. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of moves on. We we learn a bit more about her. And actually, it says that this chemical that's that's mentioned, this made-up chemical, has left her just alive. Only her memory is dead for everything. So we learn that she's suffering some sort of trauma. She's left mm -hmm. behind, but she's suffering. She can't loss. remember she's anything. Yeah. yeah. So she's lost her identity. She's lost her yeah. Identity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then what does she? Then in stanza three, she talks about. Um, walking across the rutted meadow, obviously I suppose rutted because there's been a battle, mm -hmm. but then um, she discovers this lake and, and she stands beside the lake. Then in stanza four she begins to sort of take her uniform off, and but you still get these references, don't you, to the fact that, you know, she says her mind is a secret from her as the water mm -hmm. on which she swims, so she's lost her memory, she's lost her recollections. Yeah, it, it describes her as a, a a child, an idiot, it's almost like she's she's just got no so she's got idea back about to yeah, being she's totally regressed. Which mm -hmm. I suppose could be how you feel if you lost to, all of your memories. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? She um well, as she's she's swimming, she gets she gets dragged off, doesn't she? She gets dragged off by the um, the treacherous undercurrent. It's the, it's the part though of committing suicide, isn't she? She's jumping into the mm. lake to find some sort of relief from this being un unable to know what's going on in her yeah. head. She feels very disorientated. And to get some sort of relief, she's jumping into the water, isn't she? Mm -hmm. And then she gets taken, she gets carried away by the undercurrent. It's actually dragging her under, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then Stevie Smith in the final three stanzas introduces this new, um, this new character, the enemy sentinel, who's obviously mm -hmm. you know, on, on watch on an opposing side. Um, and he's whistling on his um, on this pipe that he's whittled um, the tune "Come On, Come Back." What's the significance of that song? Do we think? Well, it's, um, he doesn't want to explain later on, but it's actually it's a it's a song that both sides sing. It's a popular song, so it's sort of by him singing um, 
whistling that, it sort of links the two sides together, perhaps suggests that they are all the same. Mm -hmm. But I think here, when we first hear it, it's, there's something kind of menacing about it, I think. Well, that's Almost asking it. her to come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. he can kill her then, as yeah, a cop, exactly. you know, just to make sure she's dead, kind of. Mm. I don't know. It's, I think I think it's deliberately ambiguous. Yes. That, uh, that particular bit, because we have this sort of quite a sort of pleasant pastoral image of him whistling the shepherd's pipe from the hollow reeds, which in itself is very innocent, and then it moves on the chill light of dawn, mm. rang out the pipes wild notes, it suddenly becomes a lot more menacing. And we know that he is, he is the enemy, so exactly. presumably he would shoot her. Yeah. Uh, it sort of reminds me though, that idea, that, that, that idea of the song that unites them of Thomas Hardy's The Man Who Killed. Um, this idea that, that soldiers are basically the same, they are equals, and it mm -hmm. just depends on, on whose side they're on. Okay, so how do we think that um, Stevie Smith has used um, language in effective ways in her poem, Come On, Come Back? I think um, throughout it, she sort of, especially around um, the middle few stanzas, she uses sort of dreamlike imagery, but also it sort of seems to... to move into almost nightmare imagery and there's a sense that it's, it's quite ominous I think the atmosphere um, mm. that she creates. Yeah because you do have your dream like ones a ribbon of white moonlight. Yeah the, the moony track. Yeah. Yeah. metaphor does. And then into that almost like the similes that build up don't they like a bit of a climax mm -hmm. towards the end that as black as her mind a mm -hmm. secret from her. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's these, these strange um, sort of juxtapositions of, of images as well. So um, she describes the lake in um, stanza four as adorable. So perhaps an insight into it, into her mind. She's, it describes her mind as, as like a child's. Mm -hmm. She's got this strange sort of attraction to something that's dangerous. And it is going to be dangerous because she mm -hmm. ultimately does die. Yeah. Doesn't mm. she? So in stanza five, it says seizing her in an icy amorous embrace mm -hmm. so there's that sort of almost an oxymoron there yeah. icy meaning cold well obviously meaning cold but distant detached yeah, but then also amorous um the, the idea there being uh, of love so again you've got the, the sort of strange juxtapositions of, of but if that words. is that because she feels that the the lake to her is in a way loving her because she's she wants to That's die at that out. point. It's her way yeah. out, isn't it? So even though it is this cold thing mm. and it's going to lead to death, it is her way out, isn't it? This amorous, it's almost hugging her to death. I think perhaps all these sort of slightly confused images and juxtapositions in a way just reflect the state of her mind as well. We're almost, as the reader, we're almost put into her position. It's a very confusing poem when you first read it. Mm. I think yeah. perhaps we are asked be put in her position to be as confused yeah, as she is exactly. as confused as her yeah. mind is sort of wrong footed mm. all the way through she asks a question in line 11 doesn't she ah me why am I here mm -hmm. so that reflects that confusion I think at the end in that final stanza um, the sibilance that we find in the swift and subtle currents close embrace sleeps on and stirs not so then we have that very kind of calming yeah. tone that's established at the end, which obviously conflicts very much so with the idea that she's died. Mm. I think perhaps it supports your idea, Kelly, that it was a release for her. That it she is was a, glad it's to a, have died. It was a choice. Was but I mean, equally, we can say it's a choice, can't we? But she wasn't in a fit state to make a choice. It no. emphasises the horrific effects mm -hmm. of conflict. Mm, and then that, uh, the sibilance is picked up again in, in stanza four. Her mind is a secret from her as the water on which she swims, a secret as profound as ominous. Mm -hmm. That's interesting actually, because like you said, it's, it gives a quite a calming effect. It slows the, lang the, um, the pace of the poem down. And yet that bit is so, un well, I find it really unsettling. Mm. So again, there's that almost deliberate contrasts of, of ideas and feelings. So what do you think about the structure of the poem? Um, one thing I think that strikes me is um, a seeming lack of uh, punctuation throughout it. Um, there's a, there's a, the, the occasional question mark and comma within lines, um, but certainly not very many end stop lines or full stops 
although of note is the fact that every stanza ends with a very clear full stop. Maybe that's kind of suggesting that the, the poem in some way is just a series of snapshots or images that Stevie Smith imagines. Definitely, I think the sort of there are. It's actually quite irregular as you go through. The stanzas aren't aren't even in their length. Um, but like you're saying, they sort of stand alone as snapshots, which I think again reflects the state of her mind. And it strikes me as like just a stream of consciousness. She's just sort of pouring these ideas out. There's no particular order to them other than what happens to her. As it's happening. Exactly, almost. yeah. Just random thoughts that come to her. Mm -hmm. and the, the other thing that I'd noticed, which is um, a repetition of Come On, Come Back, which is, you see inverted commas to show that it's a quote from this song. Um, I don't know what you think, what might that suggest, the repetition of it? It's to emphasise about it being that song, isn't it? And to give that haunting... Mm -hmm. Yes, I suppose it's, yeah. it's like a haunting echo, echo in the poem. Yeah. Yeah, the poem to... And something that I suppose we can assume that if they're singing it as they marched into battle, it was about them returning. And so I suppose in this context, yes, it does become haunting. Because mm. it's ironic she's that she's yeah, well, yeah, so maybe that's I think on first reading, for many students, it'll be quite a confusing poem. Mm. But I, I think as long as you give it the time to sort of read it through and just, just appreciate the fact that it's telling the story of this mm -hmm. girl, Vaudeville, then we shouldn't have too many problems with it. What do you two both think about the poem? I think it's a very haunting poem. I think that's what I liked about it. I think I like yeah. and enjoy that kind of, that come on, come back, the echo that you can hear ringing through all of it. And that it is about this young girl and the effects that war has had on her, even in this imagined battle. Um, I, all the little bit, it being a story, I quite like the idea of that, that you can run through all the different parts and that she has felt, unfortunately, that bad at the end that she's had to jump into this water and effect commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think I, I totally agree. I really enjoy the fact that it's something quite haunting. You can't quite put your finger mm -hmm. on it. And it, it is deliberately strange and ambiguous. And I think that, I mean, for me, one of the things that, that stood out sort of after I read it was, I, I don't know if anyone agrees. I, I think she she reminds me of Ophelia in Hamlet. This idea of madness and then sort of having to mm. and like water sort of being linked to that somehow. I don't mm. know, but I just sort of thought maybe there are echoes of of other pieces yeah, of literature in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I, and I think there are echoes of um, the most famous poem Stevie Smith wrote, um, not waving but drowning. Mm -hmm. So this idea of being in the lake and, and drowning and, and that being sort of a, a death. Yeah, it's sort of. I think it's something. There's something very feminine about it as well. It's something that reoccurs in sort of feminist literature mm -hmm. about women dying in water. And it's mm -hmm. interesting that she's chosen a female protagonist in this. Mm 